well, welcome, Brandon. Thanks for joining me. And for folks who don't know, can you introduce yourself and, and, and what you do and who you are? Sure. Uh, my name is Brandon Gray, and I'm a partner with Car Rigs and Ingram. Uh, sp specifically, I work with our consulting team, and so we're kind of known under the uh, branding of Simple Numbers. So some of you may have heard uh, my partner, Greg Crabtree, uh, who authored Simple Numbers, Straight Talk, Big Profit Speak, uh, speak to a lot of entrepreneurial groups. I actually have a lot of clients in your neck of the wood, Janelle. And so um, that being said, we work and specialize with businesses, helping them achieve and maintain profitability. And so as you can imagine, uh, we've been having a lot of conversations lately, especially given the climate that we're in. Yes. Yeah, so that, that's what we're passionate about, what we, we love to wake up and do every day. Yeah, and um, I read Greg Crabtree's book when I first started my business, and it was a game changer. And totally, we put that as the foundation of how we run um, living rooms. So uh, really work in, um, and most of the companies you guys work with now, you, you work with a lot of mid-cap companies, is that correct? Or yeah, I mean, businesses or a mix of the two? Yeah, so, so I would say um, probably the next company that walked in would probably be around the $5 million in revenue mark. We've okay. got them, you know, from just a couple million in revenue up to a couple hundred million in revenue, you know, okay. just kind of depending upon their structure and what have you there. But uh, kind of the sweet spot is probably between five and a hundred million. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so that gives some context um, for for folks that are thinking about this. Um, I, I'm i curious, like what you're telling your clients right now, well, actually, what's the general mood of most of your clients or what's like yeah. what 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 are some overall themes that you're seeing great a great question so uh today is april the 9th and yeah. so this could change april 10th uh, as, yeah. as as seems like everything's changing I, I think i shared with some of some of the folks i've been speaking with that uh there's a quote that i really love for for right now and it's that there are decades when nothing happens and then there are weeks when decades happen Yes, and it seems like the last couple of weeks have been a little bit of a decade. But that being said, um, you know, depending upon several factors uh, is determining how much of an impact you're seeing. So let me explain what I mean by that. So one yes, of those okay. being geographical. If you're in a metropolitan area that's pretty heavily populated, uh, in particular, if you're in the Northeast, if you're in New York City, you're, you're seeing one impact that, that's very severe. If you're one of my clients that is in Texas or Alabama or Oklahoma or Cincinnati or you know some places in Florida, you're seeing some impact, but it isn't necessarily as severe right now, just because of the number <laughs> of cases, obviously. Um, and two, depending upon the type of industry that you're in, you're obviously seeing a pretty large impact. And so basically, I've kind of put people into three groups. Okay. Uh, you had the folks that, as soon as this started globally back in, in, in February, they started feeling some impact because they were tied into things like the travel industry or, or uh, traveling abroad, those kind of things. And so they, they started to see a very immediate impact. Uh, and then you saw it trickle in as, as the virus started impacting more of us in the United States to where hospitality, tourism, restaurants, retail, all of those kind of things, um, mm -hmm. entertainment, what have you, started to feel a pretty immediate impact. And so I put those folks kind of, uh, you know, over here in one bucket uh, as being Pretty, pretty dramatically impacted very quickly. Mm -hmm. On the other end of the extreme, you have a group that actually has seen a little bit of an increase because of all of this. Yeah. I talked uh, to so business owners yesterday like that, that uh, um, uh, cheese, nut butter, yeah. some like big, yeah, big food companies are like, we are busier than we've ever been. Uh, grocery stores, those types of folks. Um, <laughs> Some, some folks related to government spending because of all of the spending now that's flowing through. You've seen some increases there. Essential services, you know, to some degree, in particular with healthcare, you've mm -hmm. seen some increases. And, and so those are kind of two groups on the extreme. And mm -hmm. then you've got the group in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the group in the middle is, is everyone else. And that, that's where, you know, 90% of us reside. Mm -hmm. And with that, you're, you've seen some folks, uh, what, what, what I've, observed and as we've spoken with our clients coming coming out of March and into February is that March for a lot of people still look pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know, there's enough momentum. You kind of think about the economy was a little bit of an aircraft carrier to some degree and that we yeah. had a lot of momentum coming into this. And so there was enough enough deals in, in, in the pipeline and there was enough things going on to where it kind of carried them all the way through March. And we're kind of seeing a little bit of that trickle over into April. 
Mm -hmm. For a lot of people, the end of April and then as they get into the first half of May in particular, it's kind of when we're seeing this thing perhaps bottom out because, mm -hmm. you know, all business development stopped back in March. Yeah. And so yeah. it, it's going to, to take a little while to run through the inventory of end up demand, work through that. And then hopefully by middle of March or sorry, by middle of May, you're starting to see some of the travel restriction lifted a little bit, maybe. So then by the time we get into June, folks are maybe starting to travel and meet and some commerce is taking place. So then by July, things are starting to pick back up. Now, it's not going to be a quick ramp up, I don't believe. You know, it, we'll, we'll bounce back. Uh, it was going to take some time. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. what we're hearing from a lot of people is, you know, you look at making plans that are going to be, what's my 30 day plan? Mm -hmm. What's my 90 day plan? And what's my 180 day plan? And mm -hmm. then you measure, rather you manage your business almost a week at a time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of think about two weeks ago, we, we've gotten a ton of information since then as to decisions we would now make. So, right, right, you know, right. you got to somewhat be transparent with the team of, hey guys, we're, we've got plans, but things are changing quickly. We're going to measure, manage this by the week and, you know, kind of keep rolling. So uh, that being said, I think you're going to see probably it's going to take well into Q3 to, to, start, to start to see business return. And so 2020 for a lot of folks is going to be kind of a, hey, we survived and we might have made a little bit of money, might have made some profit, uh, might have lost just a little. Uh, let's gear back up for 2021. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, you're talking about for, for goal setting or, or planning what are you, you know, what are you advising people or maybe you kind of just answer that, you know, just annual goal adjustments. I know, you know, my team's about to meet in a few weeks to review our year, you right. know, and like we set, we set a, a goal projection at the beginning of the year that is thrown out the window now. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you know, and I, and I was like, it's not even be making a, a year plan or what would you advise people as they're retooling their business plans right now? A great question. Uh, flexibility, you know, in, in different scenarios, uh, because hopefully by, you know, summer coming along and everything else, and we, we see the virus decline with the actions that have already been taken so that by June and July, you're starting to see some ramp up of activity. And so I got a, a plan that says, hey, if we start seeing some things improve in that time frame, then here's kind of what the rest of the year would look like. And I'm going to be conservative. But I've also got to have a plan to say, hey, what if we start back, but, you know, base level activity, it takes us longer than anticipated to get back up and going. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that the actions that were taken by the Treasury uh, to, to kind of help businesses, particularly small businesses with the payroll protection program, that, that's massive because mm -hmm. it, it really allows people in commerce to continue to large degree, you know, for the next eight weeks to where if that wasn't in place, we, we would be looking at a different set of planning scenarios. Mm -hmm. So you, know, you got to have a plan in either event though, that says, okay, if business doesn't come back quite as strong, what have I got to, got to look at? You know, the other thing that I would mention too, uh, as I mentioned the payroll protection and, and kind of longer term planning is it's critical right now that as you do that 180 day plan, that you understand what is your cash flow implication. Mm -hmm. for the next days. Mm -hmm. Because it's one thing to look at your losses, but if you go through the modeling and you can go to uh, our website, uh, symbolnumbers.me uh, forward slash crisis management, we, we've got a crisis management page out there and some templates that are free to use. Mm -hmm. So you can forecast out free cash flow or what your cash flows are going to be because you may look and say, hey, we, we lose $200,000, but our cash flow implication is going to be $400,000. And that's because you have to not only uh, absorb the losses, but kind of think about it when you started your business. Mm -hmm. For a lot of businesses that are out there, you started activity, you worked 30 to 45 days, and then you finally got to send an invoice to, to, to someone. Then you had to wait 30 or 45 days for that invoice to get paid. Yeah. And, and then there's people as well who had to do all of that and carry inventory. Yeah. And so when you relaunch this right now, you're living off of receivables that, and activity that, that you stacked up in the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. And that's going to run out. Now I got to relaunch. And, yeah. and, and not to mention, you know, Got a lot of folks who are looking to play offense during this time as well. To yeah. where, you know, hey, I may want to start marketing before everyone else. I guess what I need, I need cash. So put together your cash flow plan too as well. Not only just your, your annual plan, but what have you got to look at cash flow wise to get through this and, and be able to relaunch your business on the other end? So yeah. um, I don't know if that answered your question. I kind of go on a tangent there. No, that's no, that's good. Um, 
I, I'm wondering, you know, like I'll be sharing this with a lot of my brokers who are, um, you know, they're running their own small businesses, mm -hmm. most of them sole proprietors, and we haven't been totally shut down, but of course we're always very vulnerable to whatever the market's doing because right. people will sit sit on the sidelines of course there's always like other markets that come forward mm -hmm. um but that means as an agent you have to pivot if i'm working exactly. with all the listings and now well now it's a buyer's market it takes a long time to reach back out and let people know like i'm open to working with yeah. buyers because you get a reputation for one or the other so you know mm -hmm. it, it takes takes some steam and takes some time but what would you say, you know, to those, you know, the service industry, the self-employed, um, what would you be telling them to be looking at during this, like, you know, if they're having, they're experiencing some slowdown, what are the things that you say are just general business practices to be doing to, to get ahead of competition or to be prepared to, to weather it out? Yeah. There's a handful of things that you want to look at. And the first thing that I always advise anyone, large or small, is you, is you want to look at leading indicators. Mm -hmm. So what can they start to extract that maybe perhaps was just a gut feeling prior to coming into all this that they now want to quantify? So for yeah. example, how many folks are calling me and just asking about listings or are curious, you know, hey, I'm thinking about listing the house, yada, 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 or hey, have you seen any distressed properties to where people maybe would take, uh, you know, just pay off right now and get out of the property, you know, mm -hmm. if, they're, if, if they're in difficult economics uh, situations? So I think you got to look at what those leading indicators, the very first things are telling you. So before you actually see the deals or the listings or, or being a buyer's agent or a seller's agent, what are the very first things you're hearing and seeing and start to quantify that so you can start to measure activity, uh, you know, as it starts to increase. So that'd be one thing that I do. Second, I put together a really solid marketing plan based upon what the market needs. Mm -hmm. So you can bet you can break any business activity down into a handful of categories. So the first thing that with, with any of them though, is you got to find out what the market needs because you can have the best idea in the world, but if the market doesn't value it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't you know, matter. Good luck. Good luck. So if you're a, if you're a real estate broker right now or an agent, what, what does the market need? Where's the pain at? What, what, what can, you know, you bring a, a a skill set, a wealth of information to the table, and you can help people through a very difficult transaction and one of the, the perhaps the greatest financial investment they're going to make in their lives. Mm -hmm. So that said, what 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 are you, what can you provide in the current marketplace? So find out where the pain is. As Jack mm -hmm. Welch says, look for the train wreck, mm -hmm. and uh, this is a train wreck. So there's going to be opportunity to come out of this. So I want to track leading indicators to try to determine what that looks like, and then from there. I'm going to, to secondly, find out a way to do it profitably. So, you know, how, what, what does that look like inside of my business in particular? You know, I, you know, perhaps my marketing plan and what have you, spending a little bit of money, time and resources so that I can be seen as an expert in that area and help other people. And then the third thing is I got to tell everybody how, about it. So if you, if you know the need, you know how to do it and make money doing it. And the third thing is let everyone else know. So use the, if you have any downtime now, Use that to start formulating what are you going to look like coming out of this to play offense with and what can I go ahead now and, and I'm pretty much ready to hit go on, on, my, on my plan mm -hmm. when the time's right based upon what those leading indicators are telling you. Yeah, I, I imagine that if our market softens at all, um, it's going to be a buyer's, aid, a buyer's market and I would be doing, you know, uh, virtual um, home buying how to's and yep. calling HR companies and saying, hey, can, how can I train your workforce to get into stable housing and participate mm -hmm. in the economy? And how can I be the resource? And, um, you know, and, and I think that it's interesting. I, I, I totally, I sent my, I sent my agents an article from Inman, which is a, a expert real estate um, uh, publication, but they said pulling back on marketing. And I was like, I think that I, I like what you're saying. I, I totally disagree with pulling back on marketing right now, because now's the time. If you spend marketing money, it goes 10 times as far as in a busy market, because you can be heard. Like you're out there, you're working. But I like what you're saying is even more strategically think about your marketing, like what the market to what the what the market needs. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think that's key in that, yeah, I want to be cognizant of the timing around marketing to where if let, let's say the upper end of the market's not being affected and let's say the lower end of the market's not being affected, but the mid market right now is maybe slowing down. 
Well, don't yeah. market to the mid market right now. You know, just yeah. Yeah. You know, save that gunpowder, use it later. But, mm -hmm. you know, be strategic about it and where there's activity and where people will listen. You know, it's going to all be about timing. And I've told some folks, you know, yeah, you may temporarily slow down a little bit in some areas, but I'm not, I'm not stopping in terms of my plan spin. I, that just might mean that I double down on spend in two weeks, you know, two weeks later, mm -hmm. but I'm being cognizant of what the marketplace is telling me and what, what buyers and sellers are, uh, mm -hmm. what the demand is back to those leading indicators. Yeah. I, that, and you know, that's one of the hard things for me to be my, our agents were running a lot of stats from me right now. And it's like, well, I can give you lots of stats, but they're all about work that you guys did do two months ago. Yeah. And so I, you have access to the information that would tell anybody about the market a month or two ahead and what the you know the the general consensus is is that they're not seeing as many buyer calls there's more people sitting back on the sidelines and of course i think it's also too early to tell whether that's because people aren't quite clear the market's open or mm -hmm. are buyers getting cautious and so you know you just it's you know right now like you said what news is today might be totally different tomorrow yeah. just a you have to just kind of roll with the roll with the market. And the other thing, yeah, there, there's fear in the marketplace. That's just where we are right now. And so that's going to slow down decision making. But there's also a segment to where folks who are going to be investors or looking at investment opportunities, they have capital and that's probably not changed dramatically. Mm -hmm. And so they're still going to be, they're just looking for more of a deal right now than perhaps before. And, you know, I've got a lot of entrepreneurs that are sitting on the sideline that they've, they, they've had three or four really great years and they've been putting away money waiting for some type of downturn to then go and invest yeah. and take advantage yeah. of it. And so you're going to, so I think the key for you, for, for your team is who are those people and are they looking to invest in real estate and how can I, how can I um, help them uh, in terms of making the right investments from that perspective? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, L looking yeah. at it in a different light. Yeah, we de we definitely saw that. I can't tell you the number of times I talked to an investor over the last two years, and they're like, "I'm not doing anything right now. Yeah, it's too, it's too hot. I'm I, I'm sitting and waiting. I'm sitting and waiting. You know." And so it, the the you know the under story of this is that there are a lot of people that were waiting and prepared yes. for yes. this. There's a lot of people that are like so shocked, and then you know, and then it's hard because I'm talking to a lot of people that like this is exactly what they were. I don't say hoping for, but they were waiting, mm -hmm. waiting and getting prepared for because they yeah. knew that this is where opportunity is made. And these are the times too, you know, you have this time to communicate. People weren't really willing to listen a couple months ago, three mm -hmm. months ago, six months ago, yeah. but all of a sudden now you have folks who really want your expertise and they're really willing to listen. And this is that time to build up that book of business for the next 10, 20 years years this is where you really prove you know your value and like hey i'm not sticking around i'm a pillar in this industry and whether it's down or up i'm here to serve you and that that's a um it's a huge trust building moment i think oh yeah and, and i would say that one thing this isn't just 100 percent financially related but i think it applies here that i have seen as a repeating theme throughout all of this this downturn and, and the virus and what have you uh is the the importance of relationships Mm -hmm. Whether that's folks that are trying to, you know, secure uh, payroll protection funding and the relationship they have with their banker, it's very clear the folks who had great relationships and what the bankers have done to go to bat for them versus folks who, who maybe weren't in that position. Uh, you know, people that are important and strategic business partners and how they've all worked together to kind of get through this difficult time. And yeah. so if you, uh, I would relay that on to, to your team in terms of, you know, they've probably got clients that they've worked with on multiple transactions in the past. And so stay in touch with those people right now and let them know if you got questions about the marketplace, if you're concerned about the real estate market, if you're looking to take advantage of the marketplace, I'm here for you. So just yeah. continue to strengthen those relationships. Yeah. Yeah. Getting invited to do a market analysis of people's houses, just like, you know, this might not be the time, but as soon as this comes up, I just want you to know I'm here and I'll come to the house and, and just give you, so you kind of know, you can look at your portfolio and look at the house and if things have changed and what the landscape is. Cause just even that for people to get back to work and around the water cooler say, oh yeah, my agent came and just yeah. checked on me and let me know where my house value was. And now I know, cause the, the fear, the anxiety of what you don't know is so much bigger than like, okay, now I've got the information I can move on. And I, I feel like I even saw that with um, the first three weeks, mm -hmm. people were, 
you know, it was just like, what is happening? And now that we're in the new normal, people feel more confident about like, okay, yep. here's the kind of decisions that I need to make to, to move forward. So. Exactly. Well, do you have any last final words for, um, for folks or um, anything else that you're, you're seeing that's been kind of of interest or caught your eye as you're talking to all these businesses and you're kind of in the, in the eye of the storm here for a lot yeah. of us. Yeah. Uh, you know, have a plan, work the plan, adapt and overcome. And, and I think right now that's just critical. Uh, flexibility, is, is, like I said a moment ago, it's about managing a week at a time. Yeah. And having having a couple different plans, watch those leading indicators and manage accordingly. Um, you know, w w another message I would kind of send is that, yes, it's there's a lot of uncertainty. And during times of uncertainty, the very first thing we all want to do is just pull everything back and, and, and kind of, you know, hold on to it. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily a terrible move, especially kind of considering the unknown. But at the same time, think what happens to our economy if everybody just pulls back. Mm -hmm. There's no transactions taking place. There's no commerce taking place. Mm -hmm. And so I would say, sure, we want to proceed with caution and we want to make smart decisions. But at the same time, we want to keep the business flowing as much as possible, uh, you know, especially provided uh, that, that hopefully we're going to pull out of this and, and have those solid plans and, and find a way to work through it and work out of it. Um, if you're a, a business that hasn't looked for the uh, payroll protection program just yet, or an independent contractor who hasn't looked into that. Independent contractors can apply on the 10th of, of, of April. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah, need, need to go ahead and get that because that's a bridge. That's a, that mm -hmm. is a tremendous asset to help you get, get through this difficult downtime. And then there's already some funding that's going in in addition to that with the economic disaster uh, relief program, the loans there. And I even saw today, I haven't been able to look up on the specifics, but some additional funding programs are, are looked to be putting in place as well. So uh, there, there's going to be a, a way to get through it. And yeah. I think we just got to have each other's back and really, really, really work together. Uh, yeah, throw up just one more question I have for you, actually, is that I was talking to some of my agents yesterday and they're like, I don't really feel like I, I need that money. And it would that be taking money away from somebody else? Mm -hmm. and, you know, the Payroll Protection Act, and it's like you're impacted. And yes. I like what you said that it's a bridge. But, the, you know, what would your words be to people that are wondering, it, should I be applying for this or not? Right. Well, I mean, you know, to adhere to the requirements, yes, you have to be, you know, show that you've been impacted. And, and I mean, that's just about everybody out there. There's only a handful of yeah. folks that haven't been impacted uh, relative to, to what's going on right now. And if you've been impacted, then, um, you know, I, I would definitely apply for that mm -hmm. uh, and, and use the money in accordance with the plan. Uh, when it first came out, there's a little bit of concern. Is this going to be enough money? Or are we going to run out of money? You know, mm -hmm. get everything in quickly. I can't make any assurances, obviously, because uh, I'm not with the SBA or in Congress. But nonetheless, <laughs> what I've been hearing is that pro more than likely, if, if, that, if the funding starts to run low, it looks like there are plans in place to try to help increase that. Okay. So I don't know that it's so much of a, a limited pie at this point in time. Uh, so, but, you know, my advice would definitely be to look into it. Go ahead. Banks are learning a lot of this as they go as well. But uh, go ahead and, and get in touch with your local bank who's an SBA lender and, and get that process started. Okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Really it was great to chat. It. Yeah. And um, I'll be looking forward to get to talk to you in a, I think in a, in a week or two about yeah. um, our, our financials as we go. And you, you guys have been a really great resource in the book and coaching with you. So I just, I am just so, so thankful for the opportunity and, and thanks for taking this extra time to talk to my brokers and my community. It, it'll be really yeah. helpful. More than happy to. And if anyone has any questions, uh, just send them our way. And uh, if we, uh, if if you would like to do it again in the future, just let me know. Happy to do so. All right, and then, and what do you say when you see that picture that's behind you? Roll tide. Roll tide. <laughs> <laughs> All right, be safe. See you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Okay.